Welcome, Mo, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about uh, the Here's Effect, uh, this new album, Urian, or Urian, and more things relating to the metal war in general. So we, I, I, we'll start with a common question. How, uh, how, how has the band been during the last three years? Because Collapse was released in 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. Now we have a new album, Urian, uh, three years later of this new album. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, the last three years were weird to all of us, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of unfortunate that the album, uh, the, the previous album, Collapse, was released just like, I think it was in April or May 2020, so just as the uh, pandemic has started. Um, so we didn't qu get quite get the attention we expected that we would get everything was new everything was different uh on the other hand we did um we've been better than many other bands i guess if you just have a look at um how many great bands or even bigger bands disbanded or went in a, into a totally different direction and we we even managed to play some shows like some distancing uh shows in even in 2020 and also 2021 and 22 but we also had to postpone some tours and yeah everything suddenly had become more and more unplanable so yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay Okay, don't worry, don't worry. So, uh, one thing that one well, no, that, that the one thing that is obviously, ob obviously, obviously, when you release a new album, is that obviously the promotion, the live concerts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But with collapse, you didn't have the option because all everything is closed. Yeah, right. All, everything is that close at that time, etc. You just I, just, I I saw that you just did a digital concert, digital play truths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now the next, the future concerts. Uh, how will we focus more? You will focus more on collapse songs, or perhaps you will focus on Urian? Because now, if we if, if we take out the, this pandemic, three two years of absence of new or live concerts, now you have two albums to promote in a live concerts. Uh, no, we, we, it's called the Urian tour for a reason because this is our new album, and we've we. We've played uh, the Collapse album extensively, but not in a normal tour club show like context, you know. And for us, these songs have become older. I mean, we play we play songs from almost all of our albums. Urian is our sixth album now, um, but the, the main focus will be on Urian. Mm, okay, okay. Well, all of the tale that I always know about the hits. The Hirsch effect as well about the name, about the name obviously is in Deutsch, that uh, yeah. a curious name. So why did you decide to put exactly the Hirsch effect? I know why do you well put in English. <laughs> Good question. Uh, actually, I've jo I've joined the band after it was already established, but um, as we also sing in German, it was only kind of logical to us. I mean, and we, we sort of play with the, uh, with the name because we also have the English article, the, um, so yeah. I don't think there was any really well thought out concept behind it. It was just <laughs> something that's <laughs> okay. stuck. <laughs> okay. When I saw all your cover rats, well, since your first album since since Olon, Inverno, then Olon, well, not the three parts from Olon, then Escaspis, Collapse, Urine. I think this is the first album that you use a person there because in the others, you always use the human faces, then scramble abstract things into the cover arts. It's not like yeah. the same. It's not like the same. So, why always the band tries to try to present these kind of abstract things into the cover arts? And obviously, when the music fits perfectly. Um, so do you mean what, what, what do we choose what, to, to so what is the meaning change behind these, all these covers are, and especially for this new urine <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if, uh, if we even know the full meaning behind it um, as all of the artwork has been done by an uh, artist uh, from San Francisco who, who we've never met in person 
Um, and he gets, uh, his name is Alejandro Chaveta, and he sort of gets um, a condensed version or or some uh, or even translated lyrics and the concept behind each album and then he makes a, so, something out of it and uh, I think it's pretty abstract and everybody can make their own sense out of it basically so it's not like that we have a, gr uh, a really great vision what we want to show but uh, since we have uh, since this, uh, long and ongoing cooperation and yeah we're happy with it <laughs> oh, okay 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 all the details about what all the details about the the style from from the here's effect is obviously the the musical style well for me it's like mm -hmm. i i prefer to say more progressive metal because you use you use a lot of textures and grindcore madcore black metal extreme metal etc so it's much better to put like progressive the progressive way is to understand a lot of textures, a lot of mix, a lot, etc. That's the way. But for the review, for all reviewers, the band plays something like pep, metal, core, post, hardcore, progressive, DJN, hardcore. <laughs> so <laughs> put a lot of labels. So, but you are in the band. Yeah. And so, how do you define exactly the music? The here's effect is progressive metal, or perhaps you have a different approach, like the like the core set and the few and at the beginnings of nineties. We did always we played agro agro rock no new metal perhaps mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah i'm not <laughs> sorry for being so vague um i it, i i find it hard myself to put uh like real labels on different kinds of music and then as we draw from uh, various styles and especially in the, on our uh, newest record i mean one could, I think, one could even say that every song has a, is a, is of a different genre, you know, um, and and I and I agree. It's it's, it's probably, yeah, something progressive, but with different inf influences, something like that. And I, and I personally, if I'm not just talking about our own music, but uh, if I'm listening to other bands and I tell friends about it, I mostly will give them references like uh, this sounds like a mix of this band or that band. And so it's mostly comparative. Um, but I don't <laughs> then on the other hand, I don't know. I don't quite know what to compare our uh, my own band <laughs> to. So um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. and um, I I think mostly I say yeah some sort of progressive metal. Mm. Okay, okay. On yeah. with this aspect of the what what is this aspect of the transitions of the music change of change of sub subgenres into the music, but it, because always since the beginning the first effect had is not the same. It is not the same in in each album. It's very different music in each album, mm -hmm. it, no new styles, new mixtures in each. So for you, one of the biggest strengths that this album has compared to the previous one, Collapse, or perhaps compared with one with Escapist. Mm -hmm. the... um, for me, it's like, uh, uh, especially if you get, go back to, the, to our very first album, uh, there seems to be a sort of progression towards like, um you know we have all these different influences and genre mixes but we now we um yeah like every every song has got their own genre and especially in the first few albums it was uh sometimes more like yeah let's let's try to put everything all in every song you know <laughs> and so it's more like um more song or listener oriented oriented maybe <laughs> okay 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 so now uh, i remember when this when well, this kind of mixtures appears in the world i remember the two the beginnings of 2000s when appeared when textures appears in the world tesseract mm -hmm. i remember uh, periphery when well, obviously all 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 this kind of was influenced by meshuga and some and some point 
as of point. So, but now we are, I, I know that the band is started with well, they brought the, their career with the first album, Holo Inferno in 2010. And as, as you told me in the first question, in, in the answer to the second question, then now the band is growing up very fast because now in during the pandemic, I saw a lot of attention of the media by Here's Effect, you play with orchestras, and a lot of things happen with, for the Here's Effect, that's good for the band. So how do you see now this old uh, growing the, the Here's Effect, especially in the media, because you get more attention of the people, reviewers, interviews, etc., etc.? That's uh, really inter interesting for me to hear because uh, I have a totally different experience. Uh, I think uh, we've grown the most with the release of our fourth album, Escapist. Mm -hmm. This is where this was maybe the first time that we play played really long show where really many people came. We played at Wacken Festival and there was really big media attention here and now especially since the pandemic um we more and more and, and it's a general thing in the music scene or in, in, in so relatively small bands is that we find it hard to reach especially new people um i mean yeah we were sort of forced to 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 uh I mean, like the, the orchestra thing was not originally planned uh, as a uh, pandemic thing. I mean, <laughs> it would be kind of, uh, yeah, kind of silly to do things with that many people in one such small place. It was released like in February um, and then... Uh, or, or we recorded in, in February and then it was released, I don't know, a couple months or weeks later. Um, but everything we did from then on was let, so, um, was our way to, to make something out of it. So we wrote like two EPs to, 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 to bridge the time and yeah, try to try to, do, to make something new. I mean, we wrote a, an, a, an EP that sort of, um, uh, captured the whole distancing aspect so everybody uh, the three of us wrote a uh, song each on our own uh in their own home and the other two didn't even have like because usually we were pretty we we're pretty much demo democratic when it comes to songwriting aspects uh, but there was like okay so this is it uh, maybe you can tell me what you think of it or give some suggestions but in the end it was the uh, the person that wrote the song that could uh, eventually decide um so yeah this was something for us to deal with it and then i don't know uh, I, it's it's good to hear that there suddenly seems to be more uh exposure from us uh, yeah i uh, maybe maybe it's got to do that our um, label SPV SPV um, joined the Napalm Records. Maybe they have more international exposure. Mm -hmm. Could be, but we don't know. But we don't see it here in Germany. No, uh, but in Germany you have a strong scene. But so this is my point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, uh, just this weekend we played at the Euroblast Festival. It's, it's one of the biggest technical metal festivals in Europe and we played right before Leprous which are one of my absolute favorite bands and the the, the crowd was amazing so yeah mm, okay. <laughs> it's not that we don't see that our music is appreciated here but uh when it comes to like doing tours and something like that that's yeah that's maybe a bit different okay Okay, yeah. now we are talking about from the future, on uh, obviously from the promotion from this new Urian. Uh, what kind of plans do you have for this Urian? Perhaps you will do more videos. Perhaps you will embark in new tours the next year in Australia, Asia, US, or perhaps <laughs> that will be lovely. <laughs> um, so if, if you have any tips or suggestions how we could uh, realize that, <laughs> that would be awesome. I uh, know we will go on tour in October and November here in Germany and I think some, yeah, Austria, but uh, even touring doing a whole europe tour is kind of yeah 
not so easy. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have some. Uh, we did play in the UK a couple of times, and also did some festivals. We played that Arctangent Festival last last year. That was really, really great. Um, but apart from that, yeah, we'd love to have a a bigger band that would take us uh, as a support for their world tour at best. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, as I said in the first question, we will talk about other kind of aspects in in in, in music in general. We because we spoke a little about the album, a lot of the meanings of the cover art, etc. But as you can see now, the music industry changed in different ways to hear music. And first of all, uh, within years there is within years there are no more bands that fill stadiums, and everything is personalized by taste that and colors. And now, thanks to the TikTok or social media in general. There are strengths that are really silly and sometimes very implausible or even annoying sometimes these kind of trends. With the with these kind of trends I mentioned about the background, as you can see, uh, silly trends with back with the music background, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, blah 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 blah, etc. etc. So where do you think uh, where do you think are enters in this generation that already consumes little or nothing physical material? And only takes music as an accompaniment to to work, to go to go to the gym, uh, go to, uh, drive driving, or perhaps wash the car, or doing their <laughs> doing the labor, the daily daily jobs. Uh, yeah, good question. I think uh, the the kind of music that we make. Uh... I would I'd find it hard to listen to it while doing my my chores or i don't know working uh, but there on the other hand there are people that can do it and they uh, <laughs> do it on, the, on a daily basis and i sort of uh, respect that for me listening to new music is always it's a task you have to really work for it um so maybe our music is not the uh the best <laughs> to get more attention in this uh fast living social media world um yeah but <laughs> it is what it is um so yeah i don't know i mean we we even have a tiktok uh, account now but it, honestly this is not really our world and uh since we're still doing so much by ourselves i mean we uh we're no influencers uh, this is not our full-time job to 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 promote um ourselves in a way like uh or ourselves as persons as uh uh, in social media we're musicians and we try to, to promote or we try to to make art <laughs> at some uh, uh at some point and this is wh what we'd like to do but if it somehow switches if you do like 90 percent only online promotion and to 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 be allowed to do your art to play shows to play music in front of people or yeah then this can be problematic yeah yes yes yeah but we don't know how this uh how the future will develop <laughs> <laughs> yes yes and well i said that the music from the Hearst effect is very strange it's not like the old the, the other the other kind of bands you have a lot of texture dynamics and other things mm -hmm. and sometimes for for our people for other kind of people the music is very strange and weird so with this aspect now as you can see now in now in the music industry especially for the play for the playlist uh, the 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 music is very personalized uh, with more strange things uh, with technical with progressive avant-garde experimental mixing a lot of things happen now in, with the new bands on in general in all and over over the world so what do you think uh, will happen to the next generations when listening to the music that is very personal and what would we be taking about close uh, to close world for a new bands? Because there will no longer a song on the radio because they prefer to listen to more personalized artists with the playlist. Because uh, obviously the algorithm do this kind of aspect. You can 
you can hear the first effect and just you can hear 10 or 5 or 10 or 20 bands like the first effect ignore a massive thing uh yeah but um i i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing it just shifts like um in the last couple of i don't know 50 60 whatever years um some subgenres or subcultures formed um because people heard uh, songs in the radio or saw them on tv or uh, however and then people maybe went to a concert and then they saw ah there are these people and uh got stuck with it but now um if you uh, uh, the, the algorithm or whatever uh puts you into a certain group um then new i think new new subcultures will get formed uh, eventually i mean if you, if you look at the whole um the whole uh, gent gent uh genre or something this is something like that that really um started with online recording and people in their own homes like just with a guitar and a computer and out of that grew a totally new scene that now do physically meet like just at the Euroblast festival that we just played in Cologne in front of like one and a half thousand people from all around the world <laughs> and this is uh, this is something that that uh, that wasn't possible 20 years ago or or 30 years ago all right right so yeah it's just different i guess mm -hmm. okay okay well, Mo, the sad times arrived at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me. You terrific guy. Yes, it was very nice. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> this is a killer. This is a killer album, Urian. And Thank you very much. Perhaps, perhaps we want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalinum followers. Um, yeah, I wasn't even aware that there, <laughs> there are any. Because... Um, uh, uh, yeah, this is not something that I hear every day, and I was really surprised that uh, we were invited to do an interview. So thank you uh, for having us, and yeah, we'd love to come. Yeah, especially you uh, everywhere outside Europe, to be honest. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> if you have any uh, tips, just let us. Uh, yeah, let us know. Hit us up <laughs> okay. and yeah enjoy the album uh let us know what you think of it you find us on all the socials and yeah love to hear it mm -hmm.